In this video guys, we are gonna look at trading the long shadow candlestick pattern from the bull side and the bear side, stay tuned. Hey traders, one welcome to you. Thank you for joining me. All right, so the long shadow candlestick pattern is gonna look familiar to many of you because it comes under different guises. Some people might call this uh, a pin bar. Some people call this a hanging man, a hammer, all these kind of stuff. But it, you know, ultimately it's a similar thing, but looking at it from perspective of the long shadow is kind of just a broad approach. And I quite like this because rather than defining one specific candle that's got to have all these metrics, you're looking at it broadly and saying, okay, this is a, interesting daily candle. This is telling you something, and we're gonna look at a moment about where we would like to see this to potentially alert us to a trade idea. Now, this isn't gonna be something that you go, well, as soon as I see this, I wanna pile in long or short, but just tells you something might well be changing in the underlying supply and demand of the market you're watching. So let's have a look at it. We've got a long upper shadow on the left here, the long lower shadow on the right. Pretty uh, self-explanatory, guys. The long upper shadow is basically giving us a big wick to the upside. So assuming this is a daily candle, I'm much more of a fan of looking at candlestick patterns on a daily rather than a shorter time frame. Not to say they're not as relevant, but I think, or not to say they're not relevant, but I don't think they are as relevant as a daily because a whole day of trade, a lot of participants have had to agree on price over the daily candlestick as opposed to, let's say a 15 minute, it was only 15 minutes worth of, of, of kind of agreement. So I prefer to see on a daily. So you've got the wick to the upside and you've basically got a small body at one end or the other of the high of the range, daily range. So if that's your, that's your high of the day, that's your low of the day. In the long upper shadow, you've basically been traded up, come down, you've closed at lows because it's been a red candle, a red candle body, and you've opened here. So you've kind of gone up, you've tested some highs, you've had a little look at highs, price has had a little sniff around the new levels, hasn't liked it enough to stay there, and sellers have come back and pressed it lower, and they've even pressed it lower than the open. So not only have they not been able to take the highs and hold the highs, which give you a nice solid green, they've actually not been able to, and they've pressed it and closed it below the open. So there's a couple of bearish uh, kind of metrics with that. And if you look on the bullish side, the long lower shadow, Similar thing, you push the downside, sellers are not that interested, haven't been able to get a closing print down there, it's then pushed back up above the open, so you've got a couple of bullish uh, metrics with that as well. So, fine, where do we want to see these? Now listen guys, as with everything, if we see these in the middle of no man's land, in the middle of a range, completely irrelevant, not interested at all. Some people may disagree with me, but for me, I think they're irrelevant. So if you are in a situation like this, in a range-bound environment, you suddenly get that long lower shadow. Does anybody care? Not really. If that's your daily chart, you, you still, nothing is really exciting going on. It's not that interesting. However, if you get this scenario, let's say you've had a good strong uptrend, you kind of push back down here, then you get that long lower shadow, that might be quite interesting because that might be the final flush lower, the final stretch before we get a continuation to the upside. So there's ways and of, of kind of doing this. And if we see that, that might be the trigger for us to say, okay, we're gonna go long at the close, we're gonna have a stop below the low, and we're gonna ride it out for a three or four day move or whatever time frame we're looking at. Similarly, if we can also use it as an exhaustion now, I'd be very cautious about using it purely at the bottom of a downtrend like here. Let's say we had that candlestick down there, that long lower shadow down here. I'd be cautious of that. That would be something that would alert me to potentially another move lower or maybe the brakes are on for this. But very often you'll see that and you'll just see it going and going and going. However, if you saw it after we tested lower, came back down again, then we saw that. Now that gets me a little bit more interest because we've already seen some evidence that there are some buyers there. It's not a case of we're trying to pick a low here. We try and say, okay, prices move lower, it's pushed back up. We've had some kind of buys in there. Sellers have backed off a little bit, reapproached the lows. Then we get that that candle that's almost a rejection of that daily low. Well, it is a rejection of daily low, and then we can say, okay, it coincides with a double bottom. It coincides with a previous rally off the lows, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Now it becomes a little bit more of an exciting trade to take because again, we can frame our risk by putting our stop below the low. We can wait until the close. It's a little bit more of a good risk reward ratio. The probably is a bit more on our side. It lines up nice for me doing that. So those are long upper shadow guys, long lower shadow. If you're thinking about what is happening intraday, 
Uh, and like I always like to do, I like to think, okay, what does it actually mean? What has actually happened for it to have printed that rather than just looking at it as a, a nice pretty picture uh, on, on your chart? You think, okay, what's actually happened here? And then you put that in context of where would you like to see that to happen within the wider time frame, or within the wider chart to, to make it have more credibility. So examples like that, not that, examples of here and here. And, and it's gonna be very personal to you. You know, maybe you have a specific setup you like, you like buying pullbacks in trends, you like this, you like that. Okay, when would you like to see that? Because then you can wait for two or three different things and this could be one of them. Okay, I wanna wait until I see a flush lower. I wanna wait until I see a long lower shadow. I wanna wait until I see a strong close, or whatever it may be before you then even look to potentially take a trade that matches your setup criteria. Anyway guys, that is the long shadow candlestick pan. See you in the next one, take care, keep your risk managed, bye-bye.